Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible Reading Plan is for the 22nd of April, and we're going to cover in the Old Testament 1 Samuel chapters 25 and 26, as well as Psalm chapter 63. In the New Testament, we'll read Matthew chapter 9, New King James Version of the Bible, Death of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 25. Then Samuel died, and the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran, David and the wife of Nabal. Now there was a man in Maon whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings, that he was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, go up to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Now that I have heard that you have shearers, your sheep, shepherds were with us and we did not hurt them nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men and they will tell you. Therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. So when David's young men came they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Then Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? So David's young men turned on their heels and went back and they came and told him all these words. Then David said to his men, every man gird on his sword. So every man girded on his sword and David also girded on his sword. And about 400 men went with David, and 200 stayed with the supplies. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them. When we were in the fields, they were a wall to us both night and day, all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what you will do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five shias of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, Go on before me, see? I am coming after you, but she did not tell her husband Nabal. So it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill, and there were David and his men coming down toward her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain I have protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so, and more also, to the enemies of David, if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. Now when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant speak in your ears, and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let not my Lord regard this scoundrel, Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young man of my Lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. Now this present which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil is not 
found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you, pursue you and seek your life. But the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of the slain. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice, and blessed are you, because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has kept me back from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, surely by morning light no males would have been left to Nabal. So David received from her hand what she brought him, what she had brought him, and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. Now Abigail went to Nabal, and there he was, holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk, and therefore she told him nothing, little or much, until morning light. So it was in the morning, when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. Then it happened, after about ten days, that the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept his servant from evil, for the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. Then she arose, bowed her face to the earth, and said, here is your maidservant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail rose in haste and rode on a donkey, attended by five of her maidens. And she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and so both of them were his wives. But Saul had given Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, the son of Laish, who was from Galim. And now... It's time for 1 Samuel chapter 26. We go through the Old Testament once in a year's time and the New Testament twice in a year's time with this reading plan. David spares Saul a second time. 1 Samuel chapter 26. Now the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is David not hiding in the hill of Hakalah opposite Jeshimon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul encamped in the hill of Hakalah, which is opposite Jeshimon, by the road. But David stayed in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul had indeed come. So David arose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. David saw the place where Saul lay, and Abner, the son of Ner, the commander of his army. Now Saul lay within the camp, with the people encamped all around him. Then David answered and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai, the son of Zuriah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and there Saul lay sleeping within the camp with his spear stuck in the ground by his head, and Abner and the people lay all around him. Then Abishai said to David, God has delivered your enemy into your hand this day. Now therefore, please let me strike him at once with a spear right to the earth, and I will not have to strike him a second time. But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, Furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go out to battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But please take now the spear and the jug of water that are by his head and let us go. So David took the spear and the jug of water by Saul's head, and they got away. No man saw or knew it or awoke, for they were all asleep 
because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen on them. Now David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great distance being between them. And David called out to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Do you not answer, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who are you, calling out to the king? So David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not guarded your lord, the king? For one of the people came in to destroy your lord, the king. This thing that you have done is not good. As the Lord lives, you deserve to die, because you have not guarded your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the jug of water that was by his head. Then Saul knew David's voice and said, Is that your voice, my son David? David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, What does my lord thus pursue his servant? Or why does my lord thus pursue his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore, please, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, may they be cursed before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from sharing in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. So now do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have sinned, return my son David, for I will harm you no more, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, here is the king's spear. Let one of the young men come over and get it. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I would not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. And indeed, as your life was valued much this day in my eyes, so let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, May you be blessed, my son David. You shall both do great things and also still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. And so now I need to get Psalm 63 for you. And as I pull that up, um, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages at danielparsonsministry.com. And my wife, Patricia, is a gourmet vegan chef. She's got hundreds of delicious, healthy vegan recipes. You can access them all at danielparsonsministry.com on the Healthy Living tab. Please comment on your favorite recipes. We enjoy interacting with you. Thank you. Joy in the fellowship of God. The Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Psalm 63, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. And now for the New Testament scripture of the day is Matthew chapter 9. And I appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to um, YouTube and just search for Daniel Parsons Ministry, and you'll find I have a very big channel with much very beneficial content that is very helpful. Thank you. Um, Jesus forgives and heals the paralytic, Matthew chapter 9. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying in a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk. 
but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitudes saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Matthew, the tax collector. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, but, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus is questioned about fasting. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Call the friends of the bridegroom. Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. A girl restored to life, and a woman healed. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, but then the crowd was put outside. And he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all that land. Two blind men healed. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, and crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Then they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were open. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. A mute man speaks. As he went out, behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said he cast out demons by the ruler of the demons, the compassion of Jesus. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so that's the end of today's Bible reading. God bless you until we're together again. Bye for now.